Have you ever wanted to migrate your Azure Virtual Desktop single session desktops onto Windows 365 without having to reinstall all the applications and migrate all the user data across? And basically that's a pain for the users, right? I'm going to walk you through a video to show you how to actually migrate AVD single session desktop onto Windows 365 and keep all the existing data. We don't have to reinstall any applications, reset the wallpaper, reset the mouse cursors, whatever. I'm going to walk you through the end-to-end -end process using Nerdia. So if that's what you want to do, please keep on watching. And if you've never been to the channel before, then welcome. This is the Virtual Mac YouTube channel. We give the latest news around Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 5, Intune, Nerdio, and much, much more. So if this is the type of content that you like, please click the subscribe button. It really helps me grow the channel. So I really do appreciate it. All right. So we'll see you in the next one. All right, so why are we doing this? Windows 365 has definitely increased in popularity over the past couple of years. We definitely see a lot of use cases with customers running single session desktops for developer scenarios or finance scenarios, or for those desktops which they need to use like 20 plus hours a week. A lot of those workloads already exist today on single session as a version of desktop, and people want to migrate them onto Windows 365. So the process as it stands today, if you didn't use the tool I'm going to show you, you'd have to basically go and create a new Windows 365 provisioning policy, assign the Windows 365 desktop to the users, and then it would essentially be a fresh desktop. They wouldn't have their existing applications. They wouldn't have their existing configuration settings. So they'd essentially start from scratch. Now, that doesn't sound much, but if you're doing that for a large number of users, it can be quite a lot of work, um, and it's not a good experience for the users. So uh, what Nerdio have been doing, and uh, we've been working with Microsoft for a custom API, which will basically lift and shift the desktop from Azure Virtual Desktop into Windows 365. That feature is now available in public preview. In today's video, I'm going to show you how it works, look at stuff under the hood, and go through an actual migration. We're going to use a fictitious user called Bob. Bob is a developer. He likes cats, he likes big mouse cursors, and he likes to customize his desktop, right? So if you watch till the end of the video, hopefully you'll see the result that we've taken Bob's desktop and moved it from AVD into Windows 365 and Bob still has his cat wallpaper. Okay, so if that's what you want to see, then yeah, please carry on watching. So we look on Bob's desktop. Bob is a developer. So let's switch over to Bob's. Bob's spend a lot of time on his desktop. He's got some fluffy cat wallpaper. He's got his nice mouse icon. We've installed the VS Code on there as well. And he's also got his, his Note++. Plus Plus. We want to migrate Bob over to Windows 365. But Bob's very upset. He doesn't want to lose his nice mouse cursor. So what we're going to do is capture that desktop and then post it onto Windows 365. And then we've logged onto that desktop. And we'll just make sure that Bob's cursor is still there. We'll make sure he's still got his applications. It should be the same desktop. Okay, so let's go and do that now. So the first thing we need to do is to ask Bob to log off from his machine. So I'm going to sign out from there. Okay, all right. So now we're going to take a single session desktop as it was to desktop, and then we're going to migrate it onto Windows 365. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we're just going to power off this machine and log him off. Then we're going to do that instantly. Okay, so I'm going to run that now. You can leave the machines powered on if you want to, and we'll actually go and shut that machine down for you automatically. Okay, that machine is now shutting down. Now, what we'll do here, you can see we've got a migrate to Windows 365 button. Okay, so I'll show on the screen at the moment what you can see, but there is a Migrate Windows 365 button behind me. I'll put that on the screen. So I'm just going to select that Migrate to Windows 365 button, and that brings up with the wizard. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, and this is the temporary group which is going to create license group. So this is the group which contains my Windows 365 licenses, right? So what I've actually done, I've actually gone into the portal. In fact, I'll show you now. So if we go into the I main Microsoft.com. And then if we go to billing and then licenses, you need to make sure that your licenses are sent to a group. If I go to my Windows 365 Enterprise and then go to groups, you can see there I've got two groups which I'm using. Windows 365 license users, which is what we're going to use for this one. And then we've got external Windows 365 users. So I was using that for my testing of external identities last week. Okay, so I'm just going to type that in there. So Windows 365 license users, okay. User, so test user one, which is Bob. Right, Bob is our test user one. So I'm going to select next. Now we select a provisioning policy. So we've got a few options here. We can either use an existing provisioning policy or we can create a new one. All right. So I'll show you what the process looks like for creating a new one, but we are actually going to use an existing one. You select a name. 
description, language. So this will be the language of the pieces. If you have people I mean, in France, French, German, or Greek, you can select that here. We're just going to select United Kingdom. But you can use custom images. If you've got custom images, they would pop up here. But we just use the native Azure Gallery images. And then network connection. You can create a new network connection for you on the same subnet. We recommend single sign-up for this test. We're just going to use an existing provision policy. So... I'm just going to select this one here and this is my Windows Switch 5 MVP one. So I'm just going to select next. Then we're going to select our user settings. So again, if you needed to have local app in access or you want to allow the users to do a restore or maybe you want to make sure you back up every 24 hours, you can configure these settings here. But again, we're going to use the existing settings and um, which have already got configured there. Bob needs to be a local app in, for example, right? Because he's a developer. Here we'd select a local app in. Select next. You can schedule these migrations, right? If you wanted to, the migrations to happen overnight, I can just go into here, select name, and then I can say I want it to start at maybe 11 p.m. or 9 p.m. or whatever. And then that will give you enough time to, to allow the migrations to happen because they do about two hours to do a full migration, but we can select bulk so we can do multiple VMs at the same time. We're going to do this instantly for demo sake. So you can select disabled for that. And then you can also select the message as well. So if the user logged onto the VM, they'll get a message saying, hey, okay, we can set that, hey, maybe 30 minutes before the migration. And they'll get a message saying, we're going to do some maintenance and we need to log you off. Then the machine will be shut down. That The migration can happen as well. We're going to do this instantly. So we'll select that there as well. Okay. But the schedule thing is a really useful button because to say you can just schedule them overnight or in a week's time, whatever you need to do. All right, so next we have the option to do cleanups. We can use the existing machine behind if we need to. So if the user, if you want to keep the existing machine behind just in case something goes wrong, or maybe you want to keep it there just in case scenario is an issue with that desktop, or maybe the user just wants a bit of extra time to migrate their stuff and we can select clean up. Here I can select the time and the deletion date, so maybe three, five, seven days or whatever to keep that desktop for. And then we can select the time from there as well. So. I'm actually going to keep the existing one just to show you. So yeah, we won't do cleanup. Definitely recommend doing cleanups, but you've got the option there to do the cleanup and what that do that will actually clean up the existing AVD single session desktop as in delete it. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to go next. And then you can also do email notifications. So I don't have this configured in my dev environment, but you can get a message to the end user. You can set the mailbox and say migration is complete. That will allow the user to log on to that desktop and launch it. When the user wakes up in the morning, if you schedule it overnight, uh, they'll get a nice email basically saying, yep, okay, migration is complete. You can now log on to your Windows 365 desktop. Okay. So that goes to the actual user yourself who you're migrating across. Okay. This is notify end user. So again, we're going to turn it off because I don't have any mailbox configured. You can also customize that message. I can put in there any issues. Please contact the help desk. Okay. So I think that is pretty much all we need to do, right? But just to recap what we've done here, we basically told it to use an existing provision policy, a Windows 365 provision policy. We've told it to not do a cleanup, and then we're just going to migrate stuff across. Okay, so I'm just going to click the submit button. Let's hope for the best. So that job's now been submitted. Now what's going to happen, you can see here, the job's actually running. Um, it's going to create a snapshot of the virtual machine, right? It's just a virtual hard disk. It's going to copy that snapshot onto a storage account. It's going to assign the user into the necessary groups. As you can see here, a new assignments. So it's doing group management here. Once it's got the snapshot, it's actually going to create a virtual machine in Windows 365 from that snapshot and then assign the user to that machine as well. You can see there that's happening now. We've got the SAS URL for that as well. Pretty quick process. Now that's going to start importing that virtual machine. That's going to take a while, maybe an hour or so. We'll come back when that's complete. The end-to-end -end process normally takes around two hours. It's around half an hour to an hour to actually do the import of the VM. And then once it's imported, obviously we need to go ahead and create that machine in Windows 365 as well. Okay. But as I say, you can do bulk so we can have multiple of these running at the same time. That's it for now. I'll come back when that's complete. See you soon. Quick update. You can see it's going through. So let's go into the job now. So what that's done, it's done the import. So the disk has been imported into storage account and now what's happening now is actually provisioning that cloud pc if i just go into the other portal here we can see that has now been provisioned test user one and that's now provisioned the desktop from that image 
fund that PhD. So what we do, we'll just wait for that. That's probably going to take probably another 45 minutes to happen. And then once that's done, what we'll then have, we'll have a original desktop PC that we had with the AVD single session available as a Windows 365 Cloud PC with my existing settings. Okay, so the migration is now complete. Let's have a quick look and see what's happened. As we saw earlier, when we kick the job off, we can see we're basically taking a snapshot of the virtual machine in AVD, and then we are importing that into a SAS URL, okay? And then basically what's happened there is we send the license to the user, to the desktop, and then that kicks off the provisioning process. Okay, you can see here, provisioning Cloud PC, and then that started to provision that desktop. If we go to the Nidia portal and check to see whether we can see that desktop or not, we go to Windows 5 Cloud PCs, and there you go, test user one. That's our user Bob that we're using to test with. Okay. All right. So that looks like that's been provisioned. So let's actually go now and have a look on the desktop and see if Bob's still got his cute cat wallpaper, his fancy icon, and all his software installed. Okay. So I'm going to go to the Windows app. I'm already authenticated as Bob. And now we can see we've got this Cloud PC, and you can see here. You still got his old AVD desktop as well because we've kept that. Okay. Okay. So if Bob needs to do some stuff or maybe something didn't work, he can still access his old desktop if he needs to. We're just going to click the connect button. Let's make sure that desktop connects. I'm preparing Windows. There you go. We can see Bob's wallpaper, Bob's icon, and his software installed. Let's just launch that and make sure that works. Yep. There you go. So we now have Bob's VS Code running. Just give that a second to start. Yep, there you go. He's got in his dark mode, which he likes. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's migration complete. That's how you take a desktop from Azure Virtual Desktop single session onto Windows 365 while keeping all the user settings, data, software, customizations, and all that good stuff. Okay. Okay. So, there you have it. And the AVD single session to Windows 365 migration process using Nerdia. So, I think this is going to be really popular, especially with those customers who currently want AVD single session for like developer use cases or for those use cases where they use those desktop for like more than like 20 hours a week because they can just lift and shift those into that subscription based model, right? Or onto Windows 365 and then take advantage of the fact that they can just run that VM 24 7 without having to worry about the cost. And they get the advantage of all the Windows 365 new features and capabilities that are going to come into play as well. So, Definitely um, a great tool. I think definitely a tool that a lot of my customers will be leveraging and I hope you will be too. But yeah, it doesn't support multi-session obviously. So this is just single session desktops. We're definitely seeing the use case for Windows 365 where some still use like AVD multi-session, but for those like developer scenarios, for those like if they, the, the people work 24 seven, Windows 365 is definitely a good fit for those people. So yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to see this tool in action. All right, that's it from this week. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.